So where are the button functions? See, they are right there on a separate tab. And we have done that to make it easier for you to focus on the functionality that you might need to change. And button functions is definitely one of the things that you need to change because on a C30, we uh, really believe that a, a part of this, this, the strong thing about this product is that it's, it's small, it's simple, and these buttons are gonna do exactly what you need. And most likely not what we imagined when we created this default sketch. So feel free to imagine something else and this is how you, you make that happen. So if you look at the, the tab button functions, it's essentially um, the tab that contains the functionality called by this one. So let's take a look. Now inside the function button functions, the first line right here, it, what it will do is it will ask the BI8 board if any of all the eight buttons has been pushed down. And if that's the case, the corresponding bit inside this byte will be set. So what we do is we continue now and we ask ourselves, what about button number one, B1? And that turns out, if you look at the label here, B1 turns out to be the auxiliary bus, auxiliary one bus, and that's B1, B2 is the downstream key, downstream key one, that's button number two, and so on. You can, you can see we have chosen all the right labels there. Okay, so this is how it works. The first three lines will check, is button number one pressed? And if it's pressed, then it will um, change the state of a variable called auxiliary one bus select. And that's the variable defined here. And this variable, because this variable is defined outside the function, it means that the value of this variable is um, preserved uh, for each time we enter this function. So this value will be the same uh, all the, yeah, every time this, this function is called. So effectively, a push of this button will change this value to the opposite. So it will be either true or false. This is a Boolean value, this is what this means. So it can be true or it can be false. Um, and it simply changes to the opposite value. Then you can see here buttons.setButtonColor1, auxiliary bus1 select 3 or, or 4 or 5. Okay, so <clears throat> let me explain. Um, first, we need the distinction that these three lines ask if the button has been pushed, then do this. And this line is not asking anything. This line is simply setting the color of the button. But it does it on the basis of the uh, so-called flag auxiliary one bus select, which we have um, uh, changed up here. So what it, it, it says is that button number one, our button for the auxiliary bus, button number one, if this value is true, then set it to color number four and color number four is a bright yellow color. If it's not set, use color five. And five is the default background color of all our buttons uh, that, we, that we use. Let's move on. So if we have the same way of operating here. This, these four lines ask, is the button pressed? Or in fact, uh, yeah, is it pressed? If so, it's asking, please, ATEM switcher, let me know what is the downstream key status for downstream key one. And this is stored in a variable called downstream key one current status. And then we say, ATEM switcher, change downstream key on for downstream key one to the opposite value of what it's currently at. Aha. So basically every time I press this button, it will ask the ATEM switcher to choose the, the opposite value of, of what it currently is. So if the downstream key is on, ha, it sends off. If it's off, then it sends on, etc. And we see the same, this, the last line will select the right color for the button. So uh, we set for color, uh, the color for button number two, and then we are asking the ATEM switcher, ATEM switcher, please get me the downstream key status 
for downstream key 01. And if that is true, then it will output the color 2, which is a, a bright red color. If it's off, then we will select the usual background color for the button. Ha! Okay, it's exactly the same for the lower third. The lower third is basically the upstream key. So we check, is button 3 pressed? Then, ATEM switcher, please tell me what is the status of upstream key number 4. Upstream key 4, change the, the state to the opposite value of what we just uh, read from you. And then finally, set the button color to uh, upstream key number four status. If that is true, if it's on, then make it red, otherwise make it, it background color um, uh, yellow. So we have fade to black here. See, uh, fade to black is kind of, um, it's kind of easy. It's, it's different this time because we are not flipping a value. We are not changing from a true to a false or a false to a true, but we are calling a function in the ATEM switcher which will activate a fade, fade to black act, um, activity. So basically, if button 7 is pressed, ATEM switcher, please fade to black or activate the fade to black function, and that's all we do. Now, if we look at what happens just next, we have a much more complicated definition of what the button color should be. And this is uh, rooted in the fact that this button will actually blink if it knows the correct uh, fade transition time for fade to black. And um, I think I'll just skip that for now. I think you can study it yourself and, and be more, um, or become more clever. But, but basically, if, if nothing happens, it's choosing background color five. If uh, the fade to black is active, so if, if the program is black, then it will show up in red. If it's in the process of becoming black or becoming uh, not black, uh, it will actually blink. This is uh, making sure that it blinks uh, with uh, something like twice a second. And uh, it will blink between background color and a um, clear uh, yellow color. And then some other magic happens up here. So how do we do the cut? Again, this is the action. If button 8 is pushed, do cut. And here we ask button number 8. Um, if the button is pressed, and this is what we're asking for here, then uh, paint it a bright yellow, otherwise background color. So now I've walked you through all the, the ways you can program this button, this, this, and this and also the cut button, all that remains are the three input buttons down here. Their functionality depends on whether or not this button has been pushed. And as you might remember, we stored the state of this button in a variable that could be used other places in the application. So just to recap quickly, the auxiliary bus would change the value of this variable, and that variable was defined in the scope outside our function, so it's surviving every time we uh, entering and leaving the function. And look at this, input selection, this is what it says. Take care of the three bus input select buttons, change function, blah, 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 etc. So if, if auxiliary one bus select is set, which means if this is active, then do this. Otherwise, else, do this. So what we have right here is the normal operation. And the normal operation is that we select the preview and we indicate uh, program. And then it asks simply button number uh, four, which is one, five, two, six, three. If this button is set, change preview input to one. If this button is set, change uh, preview input to two. If the button three is set, change it to three, etc. And then we have, of course, this kind of long line. And um, yeah, I'll try to walk you through it. It's the same for these three, so I'll just show you this one. So what it does is that it sets the color of button four. And the first thing it's asking is, is input number one on program tally? If that's the case, paint the button red. If that's not the case, do this. And by do this, I mean that it's executing what is within these parentheses. And then it's again asking, OK, so if, if, if input number one is not on program tally, then is it on preview tally then? And if it's on preview tally, paint it green. Three is green. Otherwise, just give it the background color. And this is 
continued for these two down here as well. And auxil or for the auxiliary bus, it's kind of the same. It's again asking, is the button pressed? If any of the buttons are pressed, then change auxiliary uh, state for auxiliary one, use input number one. If it's uh, button number two, then put input two on. If it's button number three, put input three on, on auxiliary one. And for each of these, we set the button color, in this case, set button for color for button four. Um, and then we are asking the ATEM switcher, ATEM switcher, please get me which input is on the auxiliary one. And if that value equals, the double uh, equal sign means equals, it's a comparison. If it's equal to one, then make it red, otherwise make it background color. If it's equal to two, make it red, otherwise background color, etc. If it's equal to three, the same. What I hope you get from this is the fact that this uh, file, the button functions here for the C30 alternative sketch, will give you some, uh, hopefully some good idea about how you can customize the buttons in our units. And sometimes it, this is kind of the most, you know, clear program, programming that you will get on the subject. Uh, we also sometimes optimize our functionality. So for instance, if, if you look at the source code of a C201, you'll find that the way we are controlling these buses is, is not by um, repeating code over and over again, first button one, then two, then three, then four, etc. We are simply uh, making a so-called iteration. So, so we set up a single piece of code and then we're just going over the code eight times, one for each button. And uh, that's much shorter, but it's also more difficult to just like, let's say, take button number five and customize it for something different. Okay, um, just quickly, this function takes care of the slider. So uh, this is more or less copy paste. So if you need a slider functionality, you just, you know, sort of copy paste that functionality and this will, you know, operate the uh, transition of your ATEM switcher. <laughs>